Hi guys, so today I'm going to do a video um, using these Local King rubber stamp items. Now these were sent free of charge by Local King for my review and all um, opinions are my own of course. Um, so what I was thinking about doing is like a quick card and I know this generally isn't the quickest card because what we normally do with a shadow stamp like this is that we're going to color it in right with all our different colors and so it takes some time and it's you know you think about what you want to do and it's really really pretty really nice effect but today with the combo it's basically I think they sell them as combos I hope I'm right Lisa I, that's what I remember seeing when I was on the site there is that um, you have the die set so the die set also cuts out a shadow like the outer layer um, you can cut it a frame with the inner cut out of it or you can just cut the outside layer or the back layer you know however you want to use them and I've shown I have other videos doing that and of course if you watch Local King's um, YouTube channel Lisa just has tons of ideas so definitely check that out but you guys see how very much detailed this is because that's what she does when she puts the embossing and things into her um, dies that when you go to cut it out after you've done your beautiful um, stamping you're gonna have all this extra just like pretty embossing and just popping layers and maybe sometimes there's like little pieces that you can pick up and stuff like that so today I'm just gonna use that okay so just the die to make a quick type card I am still gonna do a background I'm using this one here um, I was just thinking the name of these, sorry, because uh, she had sent this out so quickly it didn't have the name. But I'll have the names of the stamp sets, obviously, in the description box for you guys. Um, and the the set here. Um, but just it's just so gorgeous. So I am going to use this. Um, and basically we're going to do just a little sponging, kind of like we did the other day. But I'm going to use a different background paper today. So today I'm going to use this pearlescent paper. I was looking for the white one. This looks a little bit beige. So the color might be a little bit different, but it's just that Crafters Companion kind of pearlescent paper, but it's like a thinner one. So again, um, I don't really have the exact numbers for this or um, link or anything like that. It came in like a mystery bag. And then the card base itself, I'm going to use this dark blue because I was looking for black because I like the way black pops. But I thought, well, you know, dark blue might be okay. So I'm going to use that. And of course, it's going to be a slimline card. And then I'm going to cut that pretty die into this mirror card. So it's Imperial Blue Mirror Card from uh, Tonic. Gorgeous stuff. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to cut everything down and I'll tell you the sizes and I'll be right back. Okay, so I do have the pieces of paper cut down. This one I just cut to basically like three and a half, maybe four inches. I don't even know. Just uh, wide enough to cover the um, whole thing. Let me see. I'll tell you right now. Three and a half. This one I cut down to four just because I wasn't really sure when I looked at the die if it needs four inches of width or three and a half. But either way, it's eight and a quarter because this is a four size paper, so it's a little bit shorter than our standard paper. But I'm going to ink this guy up in some VersaFine ink, I think. And so I'm just going to take this. Oh, and the other thing I forgot to mention is that um, Lisa gave us an extra 5% off. And please copy and paste the code. Uh, the code will be in the description box because some people have had issues with it and um, maybe you're typing it up. I, I don't know, but it should give you 5% off your purchase. And if you have any issues or it's not quite working, just uh, let Lisa know. Maybe she can help you with it because um, I know some people had some issues and it's basically like my initials, maybe YouTube. I can't remember that part, but it's five off. And I think that's where the mistake is. Maybe people are printing five zero FF but it's five O, like capital letter O, F, F. So I would copy and paste it, okay? Um, so thank you so much, Lisa. And that expires tomorrow on the 20th, so it depends on when you're watching this. Um, but all that information will be in the description box. So um, again, just so you have that information. So I'm going to use the VersaFine. I'm going to ink this up really, really, really well. I'm not putting this on any kind of stamping platform or anything like that, but you can definitely do that if you want to, especially if you think, you know, you want to, you might want to stamp again to get a darker impression, but it's going to be in the background on my card, so I'm just going to leave it. Um, I'm, I'm okay with it. So I'm just inking this up and you can smear it on too, just to really make sure it's on there, but right now I'm just dab, dab, dabbing. And I did not um, prep this at all because I, you know, a lot of the area is more of a detail stamp. Um, but if you feel like you want to rub over it with a, an eraser first, go ahead. And this paper is basically the same on both sides. So I'm just going to lay it down and we're probably going to, I'm not sure if I'm going to cut into this paper, how I'm going to use it. So for now, I'm just laying it on here. You can, I'm massaging with my hands. You can brayer the back of this, whatever is that you think you need to do to make sure you're getting every area. And so last time I colored the paper first and then I inked it, which actually I prefer and I probably should have done this time, I just forgot. <laughs> 
but this time I'm going to ink it first. Obviously, you're seeing that's what I'm doing right now. Oh, gorgeous. So I'm going to have to let this really dry because if we go in this right now with a VersaFine, forget it. Um, you're going to smear it. So this has to dry for a good minute. So what I'll do is clean this off and then we'll cut out the um, metallic paper and then we'll um, get our card going. I'm going to take this guy. I'm not 100% sure if I want... Yeah, yeah. So just the inner part. And I'm just going to place that kind of in the center there. It doesn't really matter because we're going to cut it out completely. And I'm just going to run this through my um, Gemini. Uh, it will fit through your uh, marquee. You just have to run it through twice, right? As far as the folder will go and then the rest of it or whatever other little machine. If you have a small machine, you can just do that a couple times. But... What I'm going to do is run it through just, sorry guys, I have a bunch of stuff sitting here. On here. And then again, metal shim, plastic, magnetic shim. And then if I need to um, emboss it, let's say the embossing isn't that deep, I will then go with the rubber embossing mat too. But for right now, we're going to do this. I'm going to run it through. And I will be right back. So I want to take a look at this carefully because that looks pretty good, but I can see the embossing isn't that deep, right? So what I'm going to do is go ahead. I'll just turn it facing up. Well, no, let's not do that. I'll just put this mat down and then we'll put this on there and then we'll do this again, but without the magnetic mat. So it used to be that Gemini had the same color mat and then they would say, don't use two purple mats at the same time. So do not use the magnetic and the embossing at the same time. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so hopefully that's a little more embossed. Yep. Yep, and you can see on the back of there, you can see all the details now. So we definitely want that because we're just using this detail, right? So we need all that detail there. Let me take this off very carefully. Uh, let's go ahead and remove. So I, in my mind, I was like, oh, I'll do this. I'll do that. Maybe I'll make a shaker. You know, I'm not sure exactly. So I'm going to pop this out, make sure it comes out nice and carefully. So starting with this here. And let me think how I want to layer this up. We still need to color our um, base, though. I just want you guys to see this because this is so pretty. Lisa did... I mean, this is ridiculously amazing. Look at that. Without any stamping or anything else, it just looks really cool. I mean, you can see the ray, you can see the octopus, you have our little whale. I mean, look at the, oh, so cute, the jellyfish and all these different little fish that are in here and the corals and the crab. I mean, everyone stands out. Okay, let me clean up and I'll okay, be right back. I still see that that's a little bit shiny, so we're still not going to work on this part yet. Again, I didn't hit it with a heat tool or anything like that. Look at that. I got ink on my hand, so I know it's still not quite dry. I have our pretty lady here. What I think I'm going to do is I'll make a shaker, <laughs> but we need a little frame to go around this or else it's going to be very difficult to do this gorgeous thing. So what I'm going to do is put that to the side for now. I'm going to take just this green piece and this is cut just smaller than eight and a half by three and a quarter. So it's like uh, eight and three eighths by three and um, an eighth, basically just smaller than, I'm sorry, then three and three eighths. So eight and three eighths by three and three eighths. I was gonna say, I think it was eight and a half or seven and a half. So I'm gonna take this guy and I haven't even cleaned him out yet, but basically what we wanna do is just cut this out of the dead center just so it looks nice. And we're gonna do something like that. And where is my tape? We don't want this to move because we are gonna use the outside of the green um, portion here. So we want to make sure it stays nicely so I'm gonna go ahead and just it's gonna be a very thin frame stick that down there and stick this just so it doesn't move too much uh, here okay I'm gonna run this through and I'll be right back okay so all we're doing with this piece again we just want this outer frame part so <laughs> I don't really mind whatever's going on with this other piece here and we can use that for something else. You want to run it through with another, you know, with your embossing pad and use what's in here. You can definitely do that. This piece here, but I want to keep this. Sorry, I have my door open and traffic is kind of loud. Okay. 
So I dug through my acetate pile and I actually have some acetate that just has little strips like this. And I'm going to use this one because this one's basically about the size I need, which is just about three and a half by the eight or eight and a quarter ish. Let's see. Yeah, so that's going to be my piece that keeps my shaker going. All right, so I'm going to put glue on the back of this. Again, this is this part takes a little time because I'm going to be very patient, and very careful with this. <laughs> But uh, I'm going to put glue all over these little parts that go inside here. Just putting it everywhere, okay? And I'll be so right back. I have that. I'm going to take this guy and carefully place it where I need it to go. And I'm just going to hold that down until it's set up, okay? I'll be right back. Being super careful with this. We're going to turn it over. And then we're going to pop in our gorgeous blue piece into this negative, okay? So I am gonna put quite a bit of glue again, just all over the back. If you need to put it on the back of your hand, um, you can do that if you wanna pay attention to the areas that maybe pop up. Um, I don't think there are any. Maybe his little eye there, but you can do that. But again, just really get it in all these little spots. And I'll be back. Okay. And I'm gonna bring this over and ever so carefully just start nestling it into the spot that got cut out. Um, so mine's very thin frame because I like to have my cards a certain size, the slimline cards. But if you like yours a little thicker, then go with that, you know? You'll have a different size frame. And then just do the math on that. Okay, so I'm gonna, again, just continue edging this in here and holding it down, making sure it's all glued down. And I'll be back. But hopefully you can kind of see what's going on. So as I'm working it in there, I'm going to just put a towel on the back and just rub that down. So whenever you have something like this where you cut the frame, you cut the other part, they might be a little bit different because of the thickness of the paper and maybe the way it ran through might have gotten squished. So you really have to be patient with one like this. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of started in this edge and I really kind of got it in there. And then this was kind of wanting to be down low. So I had to push it up really well. So just don't be afraid to manipulate it. It's going to work. You just have to do some manipulation, okay? So I'm gonna just keep holding this down in the back. And then um, we'll finish up our card front. Actually, in the meantime, again, this is uh, a slimline card and the way I like them is to be three and a half by eight and a half when I'm done folding them. So this one is eight and a half by seven. I'm gonna score it at three and a half. So this will be folded when we come back and we'll finish up our background and get it all put okay, together. Fair warning, this paper is taking a very long time to dry. I even hit it with a heat gun and it's still not drying. So. Uh, to my satisfaction. So I'm going to be very careful with this and I'm almost scared. Um, if it doesn't work right, we'll just uh, stamp it again on something else. But I'm just going to dip into my blue and just add color. I'm not really looking to mess with this too much, you know. So as you can see, I'm not swirling it in there. I'm just adding the color on top. If it had dried really, really well, I would probably be swirling. But for now, we're just going to do this. And I'm just taking a ton of colors. I have some blue, I have some green, I have some yellow. Just gonna come in here. And again, this is gonna be way in the background, so just kind of messing with it. However, I feel like. So odd. I tell you, sometimes it's pearlescent paper, sometimes it works, and sometimes it wants to repel, right? So I have an orange here. I'll be careful with the orange because it's a. Sometimes, you know, you get green and <laughs> you mess with orange too much. So I'm just stomping that down there. Um, I have a pink. I need to finish labeling my little labels. Pink tulip hair. And I think the last color I have to play with is a yellow. Or did I use? No, the orange. The deep orange. I used yellow already. And I'm going to hit this with the heat tool too, just in case, because. Oh, that orange is so pretty. And the pearlescent paper really makes it look really pretty. It's just, I don't know what it was doing. Again, it's just taking for a long time to dry. Okay. Um, I'm going to clean up my sponges and just wait for this to dry a little bit longer. And I'll be right back. All my pieces here. So again, I cut this down to about three and three eighths um, by eight and three eighths. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this down basically to the same size. And I'll be right back. And then we have our card base. So I'll be right back once I have this. And we'll be good to go. All right. So we're just going to stick this down. And where are... Here we go. 
So I'm putting this on here because again, <laughs> it's taking a very long time for that to dry. I don't want to smear it just in case. So, you know, use the paper obviously that you're used to using. I just wanted to use something different and it just took a long time to dry. So I don't really want to mess with it too much right now. Um, how do I want it? This way. So this was standard A4 size paper, so it's only eight and a quarter already in the width. So I did cut it down to three and three eighths, but it's a little bit different in the width there. All right, there we go. And you know what's funny? Um, I keep trying to keep this clean. I totally forgot and I did all my colors and sponging on this. So I try to clean it off and it's just gonna get dirty guys. That's just what's gonna happen. Okay, so we have our base here. This covers up quite a bit of it, but um, obviously you wanna build up your base, it looks nice. Okay, and so I'm gonna do with this one is just get our foam put on the back. And again, I just have this big foam. People ask me about it sometimes. It's Crafter's Companion Foam. I don't know the thicknesses. I don't really know all that information right now off the top of my head, so I am sorry. I'm probably gonna cut it every time I need to curve it around because I don't really wanna mess with it too much. I don't wanna get my fingerprints all over that pretty metallic paper. So I'm gonna cut this and then go to over here. And I think we're good to put it right on the edge. I don't think um, anything will really show through. But again, if you like doing your cards a little bit thicker than mine, you're going to have more width, more area, right, to do this. So I'll be right back once I put the um, okay, foam tape so down. I already put those on the back and I already took this little back pieces off so we won't have to mess with that here on camera. But I'll put that to the side. And then I'm just going to get some of these. This came from probably a... Um, a kit from Crafts Companion. I know it came from one of the boxes, but look at the colors. I thought they were perfect, so that's gonna work out for me. I'm just gonna put these guys in here, kind of spread them out, not too much, because I want them to show up, but I don't want it to be overwhelming. And then we have our card base, and just make sure your card is opening the right way, which I think it is. <laughs> and then, of course, what you would do is just put your um, your sentiment wherever it is that you would like to put that on here and I'm just eyeballing this making sure I'm kind of where it needs to be okay sorry guys uh, so yeah so hopefully you know quick I think for an artsy card and doing it just a little bit different way so thank you so much Lisa for sending these items from my review I'm just holding this down because again that I don't know if that paper down underneath is nice and dry yet um, and yeah, you'll have your discount again. It expires tomorrow on my son's birthday, 20th birthday. And thank you guys. I know a lot of you guys have already been saying happy birthday. But just add your little sentiment and you're good to go. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, I'll have pictures for you. And I will see you guys at the next one. Bye now.